The year is 1934, and once more we find ourselves in Bermuda. Dr. William Beebe and Mr. Otis Barton have teamed up yet again in an attempt to break their previous record of deep sea exploration using their famous bathysphere. These men and their ace team will be using state-of-the-art engineering, telecommunications, and multiple instruments during this descent, attempting to go deeper than any man has gone before. The bathysphere is a spherical device that is four feet in diameter with walls an inch thick and reinforced quartz windows. The door will be sealed with ten separate bolts and will dangle from a steel cable before it is lowered into the ocean below. During his descent, Dr. Beebe will be connected by radio to Miss Gloria Hollister, who will be taking notes and ensuring safety from above. We are calling upon all artists to help us document this mission. Listen now as Dr. Beebe begins his descent to answer the question, what is life like in the deep ocean? Hello, hello to all you folks at home. This is Dr. C. William Beebe oceanographer, naturalist, and explorer for the New York Zoological Society, reporting to you from offshore of Nonsuch Island in Bermuda. It is dry inside the bathysphere, and the oxygen supply is fresh as we begin our descent into the ocean. We are now at 200 feet. And as the light is beginning to distort already, it is impossible to say whether the water is a greenish blue or a bluish green. At 600 feet, the green has long disappeared and the color of the water is a dark, luminous blue. At 1,000 feet, the last hint of blue tapers into a nameless gray and this finally into black. As I peer into the darkness, I begin to see explosions near the window of the bathysphere. I am peering through the window, following a small creature several inches long. Yes, there it is, exploded again. The flash is so bright it has illuminated my face. It appears to be a red shrimp with immense antenna carried in front of him like stilts. Blue flashes of light bursting from its mouth like a dragon as it darts away. Oh, magnificent. We are now at 2,000 feet, and now the blackness seems to close in on us. The sun is defeated and color is now banished as we flash our light, peering into what has been jet black for two billion years. Oh, look! There's a real deep sea eel undulating near us. Its body is snake-like with a very long, thin tail that tapers out with a glowing lure on the end. It must be several feet in length. Its eyes are set close together at the top of its head near a short snout. But it is its mouth that is unique from any eel I have ever seen set wide across like a spade or shovel with a ballooning gullet, almost like that of a pelican. It floats vertically on the water, mouth agape. Oh, incredible. We are now beyond 2,500 feet. Suddenly, a strange glow appears in the darkness. Luckily for us, it has darted into the light. It looks to be about six inches in length, oval and dark in color. Its pectoral fin is set back on its body. Its small eyes are set on either side of its head, which is made up of an enormous, gaping mouth. The lower jaw is thrust forward, set with rows of pointy teeth. It is maneuvering around in front of the light, and now, as it faces me, its mouth looks like that of a Cheshire cat. The glow is comprised of a pale yellow organ set on three tentacles attached to its forehead that bob about, no doubt attracting prey in the dark water. I signal to Miss Hollister that it is now time for us to return to the surface. <laughs> this has been 
the most fascinating experience. To my audience listening, I summarize the outstanding moments that this dive has etched into my mind. Firstly, the flash of bioluminescence that dances all around the water. Secondly, the complete absence of light which enveloped the bathysphere and seemed to swallow us whole. Third, the many, many incredible species yet unknown to man. The only thing comparable to the strangeness of this dark abyss must surely be beyond the earthly atmosphere in the blackness of space. 